Remember again, America, through other wars, this nation kept Thanksgiving Day. In reality, that story didn't transpire as we have been told. The family's just as ready, and there's that bird. If we're going to rely on the story of the Indians and the pilgrims, then we need to deal with some harsh truths. What does it take to get a more in-depth look into the week's top local news stories? The Debrief brings you inside for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our reporters every week, right here, right now. The Debrief. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the News 4 Debrief. I'm Michael Gorgio, in for David Ushery. Ask many Americans, and they'll tell you their favorite holiday is Thanksgiving Day. Not just because it's food, family, and football. Thanksgiving is treasured for its story. We give thanks today, as the colonists did in the 1600s, when they celebrated their harvest in their new settlements with the Native American tribes who helped them and taught them how to plant and grow crops. But did that really happen? Joining us now is Dr. Joe Stallman, director of the Seneca Iroquois National Museum. Dr. Stallman, thank you so much for joining us. In your view, what don't we understand about Thanksgiving? Well, Michael, uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to be here with you this morning. So for me, as a, uh, I'm a Native person, but I'm also a cultural anthropologist. And so in order for me to do my work, I do a number of things. I rely on the written record. It's very valuable. I rely on archaeology, but I also rely on the voice of Native peoples. And so growing up, one of the first things that really struck to me was that uh, I wasn't hearing about Thanksgiving from uh, Native people. It always came from the voice of America. As I worked my way through life, I became kind of curious about this holiday in particular and that original story. I really explored it in earnest. And in reality, that story didn't transpire as we have been told. What happened? Well, before I begin, can I do a little uh, preamble? Absolutely. So this story that I'm about to tell is not to ruin Thanksgiving for anyone, but to uh, enhance it and make us aware that there's a larger story here that a lot of us haven't heard. The original Thanksgiving is when the pilgrims landed, they actually stayed on the Mayflower for a, for a while, but they also came at a time where they didn't have time to grow crops. So this idea of a colony coming uh, to the shores of the Eastern seaboard, uh, they weren't prepared for it at all. And so where they were docked off the coast of Massachusetts, uh, right on shore was a uh, Native American village that uh, most of the people had uh, either died off or left. And so uh, based on the evidence in this village, it looked like there might have been a plague there because a lot of the houses were still set up. So when you review the, uh, the diaries of the early uh, pilgrims who went there, they uh, talk about coming into these homes and everything was set up. And so it was kind of like a ghost village. And so these early pilgrims thought it was divine providence from their creator who uh, provided them with plenty when they had nothing and they were about to go into a very hard winter. Now, doesn't that fit, though, into the larger narrative of Thanksgiving as it's become part of our popular culture that uh, that they were giving thanks for something that they were able to take advantage of and allow them to thrive and live in the new world? No, because that's okay. not the story that we're being told about Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the story of Thanksgiving that we embrace, all Americans embrace, is the one where pilgrims and Native Americans came together. What do you say, doctor, to, to, to people who say, oh, now we're going after Thanksgiving, we went after Columbus Day in the month of October, and uh, this is an effort to uh, essentially demonize how we viewed American holidays that have been celebrated long and wide. Yeah, I, I hear this question a lot, sir. And uh, I have to be honest. It's I'm not trying to destroy any holiday. Actually, I'm trying to embrace it and allow all of us an opportunity to know that there's more to a story. And Let's sometimes we're told stories for certain reasons. And uh, uh, I, I'm not sure with this one. But, you know, when Abraham Lincoln declared Thanksgiving a, the first national holiday, he did it for a reason. And I think that's the reason that we should really embrace, right? Because right, the should... United States was in a moment of a terrible civil war. Uh, it really was brother against brother, nation against nation. And he was looking for something that would bring people together. And that is something to celebrate. Uh, he had a lot of foresight. 
he uh, he he was really troubled by his present, and he was looking for a first step to a solution to kind of mend. So, really, what you're saying is that that the story of Thanksgiving essentially was sort of reinvented during the Civil War as a way to unite the people, and then the backstory was filled in from there. Yeah, most of this backstory that we have come to understand as Thanksgiving uh, came to being in the 20th century. You make a good point because a lot of the things that we know of as relating to Thanksgiving come from some very famous pictures, paintings, right? Historic paintings. And I know you know some of them and you have a strong opinion about some of the most famous ones. Tell us about that. So uh, N.C. Wyatt, he's actually one of my most favorite painters. Okay. Uh, he really is. Uh, so before NC was famous as a painter, he used to do illustrations for children's books like Robinson Crusoe, mm -hmm. Last of the Mohicans. So as a kid, I was always fascinated by his artwork. As an adult, I take a little bit more of a critical eye. And so one of the paintings that I like to talk about when I talk about Thanksgiving is uh, NC Wyatt's uh, Thanksgiving with the Indians, 1940. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, it's one of those uh, paintings that shows a lot of accurate representation of Native people, but it's kind of framed in a situation where Native people are looked down upon. Mm -hmm. And in this painting, what you see is a solitary uh, European pilgrim holding a basket of food, and there's a circle of Native men on the ground eating uh, with their hands or out of uh, a, a solitary dish. And so for a lot of onlookers who don't know anything about Native culture, what they see is a little bit of uh, Europe trying to help uh, the Native American who were known to be uh, the, the noble red savage uh, living in the woods. And we weren't doing much until the European came. And so this painting encapsulates that idea. A lot of people don't realize in the painting, sir, is that on the ground, you see men sitting around and eating and sharing a meal together, and that's actually customary in our practices. And it's called, it's an idea that we call one dish, one spoon, because we know we have to share everything together. And so it's actually speaks volumes to our culture when we actually sit down and share a meal together like that. So uh, tough question for you here. In your sense is what you're saying is the Thanksgiving was really because the indigenous tribes, either by design or by default, helped these settlers survive. And really, it, it, it's, it's really a, a different take, not a different take, but a different interpretation of Thanksgiving. In your view, sir, how should we, should we celebrate Thanksgiving? And if so, how should we? I, I think we should uh, celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, in the last two years, watching the country go through all of these immediate changes, I find Thanksgiving more important than ever. I think it's really needed right now. We really do live in a divided country. But then when we look at Thanksgiving, Dr. Stallman, how should we look at it? Because we can't look at it like, all right, the, they laid out a table and the pilgrims and the indigenous tribes sat together and shared a meal and ushered in this era of cooperation. How should we look at Thanksgiving and, and how should we look at the story of Thanksgiving in your view? I think we need to go back to Lincoln's idea of what he wanted for Thanksgiving. And I think we should uh, continue to embrace that idea because I do think a lot of people do already without thinking about it. However, when they do it, they, they frame it back to that time of the pilgrims. And I don't think we necessarily need to go back that far. We're going to rely on the story of the Indians and the pilgrims, and we need to deal with some harsh truths. Uh, there were some terrible things that happened at that initial contact. And there are things that happened that the pilgrims did when they left the Mayflower to go on shore that I, I won't go into, but it's very uh, insensitive on their knee, on their part. But I wasn't there with them, so I don't understand their needs as a people. So, Dr. But, Selman, are you saying we should celebrate Thanksgiving but not hang it on a story, but, 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 but make it a holiday based on the sense of Thanksgiving. That's right. Uh, Thanksgiving is being thankful for our harvest, for everything that has been provided to us, the bounty of life. And I think that's the message we need to hang on. As someone who runs a museum, who runs a study of this, what do you say to people say, you know, 
we have this is such an integral part of our of our culture that to examine it in a totally different light is to ruin the experience for so many Americans. What do you say to that? I say that's not true because that's how I was led down the path to learn more about Thanksgiving myself. I heard of a few versions of this narrative and some of it didn't vibe with me. So I was curious and uh, a natural researcher and I went looking uh, and it didn't ruin it for me. What it did was give me a larger picture of what's going on. Before we go, I want to get back to that original story. So we've heard the story of sitting together at the table, but you're saying in the actual first Thanksgiving, it may have been pilgrims who spent most of their time on the Mayflower because that was their shelter. Mm -hmm. then transitioning into this village whose structures had been left by people who were decimated by, by a plague, something we can all relate to these days. What do you think actually happened that first Thanksgiving? I think it was a situation where you had about 30 Europeans surrounded probably by double or triple the amount of native people. So when you go back to these paintings, you always see a larger number of European peoples in the framing of the image and very few native people who are always in the background. And so if we're going to talk about the true story of Thanksgiving, we need to remember that Native Americans were there very early on to help uh, other human beings who were in need of help. And they they weren't judged. They were just uh, helped. I was reading an editorial about Thanksgiving and, and looking at it in different ways. And the person wrote, well, these people will only be happy if no uh, nobody ever came to North America, if nobody ever sailed across the seas. And, and it's unrealistic to think that because people naturally around the globe and throughout history have gone to other places in search of opportunity or fleeing from persecution. Are you saying that uh, it would have been better off if no Western, no, no European rather, had come to the shores? Is that is that your position? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't go back and imagine what the world would be like uh, with or without Europeans in it, and nor do I want to. I know I live in a, a, a present world where I have a, a, a wide div a diversity of neighbors and friends and family, and not all of my family are Native Americans. I have uh, uh, white people, new Americans. Uh, there are some black Americans in my family. I can't imagine my life without those people in it. I just can't. And, and do you feel that this new understanding could maybe enhance our appreciation of Thanksgiving? I, I believe it can. Uh, you know, I give this talk. I have a talk where I talk about Thanksgiving and I uh, give it to undergrads. And you know what? Thanksgiving is not ruined for them. Uh, they usually come back with more and more questions. They want to learn more about history. It encourages a new realm of study that they never considered before. And it was something that's so mundane, right? Something that we take for granted, Thanksgiving. We don't really put a lot of thought into it now. We think about turkey and football and being with friends and family, but there's much more of a story there. There is. And Dr. Stelman, I can't thank you enough for you. Um, talking to us about it today. We really do appreciate it. I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I want to thank you for your insight. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Stallman. And remember, it may bring up a discussion for, about Thanksgiving as you get together once again this year. Dr. Stallman, thank you so much. And thank you for listening to The Debrief. I'm Michael Gorgiulo, and we want to thank our production team, Ben Berkowitz, Melissa Mack, and Darren Price. We'll be back next week. Uh -huh.